Hello, uh, welcome to the National Research Center, Mass Communication and Journalism Department of Tejpur University. I am Shishir Basu, Professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Banara Sindhu University, Varanasi. Today, uh, we are going to talk about development communication. In the first lecture, I will be talking about the genesis, that means the beginning of development communication and uh, the main contours, main themes, main thoughts of development communication. And in my next lecture, I will be talking about some of the criticism, uh, pointing out what the critics have said about development communication and a kind of assessment that we would like to do in, um, in my next lecture. So, let us begin, uh, let us talk about the, the beginning of development communication. In two of my previous lectures, one on communication, beginning of communication, the other one was the genesis of communication research. I have said that, emphasized rather, that uh, this communication discipline began uh, in an earnest uh, during Second World War or after Second World War. Uh, if we see the genesis or the beginning of development communication, it began during that time. Uh, you know in uh, university departments, development communication in India is quite popular. Uh, we know it as DC, so development communication. It started as a project to spread the news that through development uh, communication or through communication, particularly through radio, messages of development uh, can be spread around. And from that concept, uh, the development communication has come about. In fact, this concept of development communication is a soft weapon uh, that was employed by the USA powers that be uh, uh, to influence the third world countries or develop, developing countries to come to its fold. So, uh, development communication as an area of uh, study um, came uh, with a tag. With a tag means it was promoted by uh, a particular thought, you know, by particular uh, uh, political approach and uh, uh, it was also uh, channeled through educational institution like many universities started uh, you know the subject area of development communication and also many scholars uh, came forward to give it a theoretical frame. It was also given uh, in the university level as, a, um, as an area of study. Now, if we go deeper into uh, when it began and all, we see the seminal work of Daniel Lerner. He wrote a book called The Passing of the Traditional Society, Modernizing the Middle East. Now, many people would be asking why in the Middle East. Uh, Daniel Lerner conducted some studies uh, in that area and uh, he thought of putting all his findings in the form of a book a kind of a thesis uh, in which he propounded, he said that development communication uh, uh, is the weapon by which traditional societies can be helped to become modernized. So, uh, Lerner wrote this book in 1958 and his uh, study was based in a village called uh, Balgat in Turkey. Now, he visited this place a uh, couple of times, means two times. When he visited this Balgad village in Turkey for the first time, he did not see any development and for him development was uh, road, uh, asphalt road, you know, buses, electricity, running water and all those things. He did not find anything of that sort. Uh, he found that people were more uh, you know involved in agriculture uh, they had you know uh, herd of sheep to look after and um, to grow food and vegetable in the land that they had so for him this was uh, you know a traditional society 
it had uh, no intention of becoming modern. But during his uh, second visit, he visited that place I think after two or three years and he found uh, a lot of changes in that, so uh, in that village. So, he saw that uh, that Balgad village was on its way to become modernized. He saw running buses, electricity was already there, there were running water systems, uh, there were refrigerators and about 100 radio sets and people used to listen to radio. For him these were the parameters for development. So, he thought that Balgat was a village which was a traditional village, but was moving through the help of communication, through the help of radio broadcast and was becoming modernized. Now, uh, in his thesis that is in his book, he has uh, categorized uh, the villagers into three types. Uh, one type was traditionalist. He found that many people uh, did not leave their old habit, old way of living. So, he called them uh, traditionalists and for him that these people would never become modernized. So, he thought that they could be categorized that means they would leave the world by being you know uh, or by remaining traditionalist. The second one uh, he found that uh, some people were there the second type uh, they he called them modernist that means these people were already becoming modern like they have left their traditional clothings, they were wearing western clothes, uh, they were listening to radio, they were moving by running buses in their houses, they had already the running water, the piped water as we say. So, he called them modernist that means they were ready and they were already leaving their old way of life and moving to a modern way of life. And the third category who were in between traditionalists and modernists, he called them transitionalists. That means those who were not yet modern and those who were about to leave the traditional way of life and move to the modern way of life, he called them transitionalists. For him, they were the hope. Say so the first one, uh, the type is called traditionalist. So, they were they would never become modern. The second group uh, was already modern and the third one was on its way to become uh, modern. So, almost he could establish by almost 66 percent of the villagers would eventually become uh, modern. That is uh, out of three groups, two groups uh, were already there. Now, uh, this really uh, influenced many, many people who were into uh, development projects, those who were taking policy decisions, they thought that you know uh, radio and communication was a, uh, was a potent force uh, to change the traditional villages or traditional way of life and help people to become modern. And in 1964, uh, keeping that track, Wilbur Schramm wrote uh, a book called Mass Media and National Development, which also became very famous, a kind of a Bible we say, like uh, Daniel Lerner's Passing of the Traditional Society. Uh, the scholars, the researchers, the policy makers, they were uh, reading these two books. So, Mass Media and National Development in 1964 was published, was written by Wilbur Schramm. Later, he of course, revised this book in 1979 and uh, it pointed out 12 areas of influence that mass media could have on the society. So, uh, this book uh, is still there and many uh, departments pick it up these two books because they are the foundational book for the concept of development communication. Now, when uh, Wilbur Sham talked about uh, that 12 areas of uh, influences that media could have, uh, we can broadly categorize them or club them these 12 influences into three major categories. One was that uh, the media uh, had the ability to educate people. 
So, uh, education was one, there are many ways people could be educated by uh, media. The second group could be, uh, could be clubbed as to inform. So, information was something just to impart information, uh, that was one category, to educate was one category. And the third one was uh, helping people, uh, encouraging people to participate in the development projects. So, participation was necessary. Uh, then people would be thinking that the projects that were there for, uh, for the, with the intention of development, um, uh, if they participate in that, they will be thinking that that is their project and not somebody else's project. So, broadly, uh, SRAM's 12 uh, points of influences could be categorized into three uh, broad types. Uh, one was uh, to inform, the second one was to educate, and the third one was encouraging uh, the people or the recipients of the fruits of development to participate in all the projects. Now, as this was going on, uh, what we have seen that United Nations through UNESCO also uh, jumped into this, this flow, flow of development communication. They have come up with a kind of a norm. Uh, they said that for each hundred people, there should be ten copies of newspaper, there should be two radio sets and two cinema seats. That means, uh, you can imagine that at that time, when they were talking about development communication late 50s, early 60s, uh, for every 100 people, there were uh, no 10 copies of newspaper. Uh, there was no two radio sets for 100 people and there, there was no uh, two cinema seats for 100 people. So, that was a kind of a benchmark. That means many uh, underdeveloped countries, those who were eager to develop, they took this norm as something that they wanted to achieve. And uh, there have been many uh, efforts uh, from the developing countries to achieve this. 10 newspaper per 100 people, uh, 2 uh, radio sets per 100 people and 2 cinema seats for uh, every 100 people. Now, uh, with all these things at the backdrop, so this is the beginning of Genesis, the infrastructure was being laid, the people were being told that they should use communication uh, to bring in development for their people. The scholars uh, stepped in and uh, there were uh, some very good definitions about development communication and uh, we will discuss about uh, some of these uh, definitions. Uh, let us uh, start with uh, the, the first and quite uh, fundamental and quite popular definition of Nora Kebril in uh, 1975. Now, Nora Kebril uh, was closely associated with International Rice Research Institute um, in Los Banos campus uh, of the University of the Philippines. Uh, uh, she undertook many projects, particularly in the sector of agriculture, and uh, she conducted campaigns also. And so, she had an insight as to what development communication can do and how it should be treated and what should uh, the philosophy of development communication be. So, I am quoting uh, her now. Uh, she wrote that development communication is the art and science of human communication applied to the speedy transformation of a country and the mass of its people from poverty to a dynamic state of economic growth that makes possible greater social equality and larger fulfillment of human potential. Uh, there are some key words in it, let me point out. Uh, she said that it is art and science, that means a lot of creativity should get into it uh, in development communication when we are making programs or when we are uh, packaging messages. So, creativity is involved, that is why it is art. Now, he, she is also saying that uh, it is science because it has to follow certain principles, 
certain rules, certain regulations of making these packages and developing the messages. So, she calls development communication as art and science and then she talks about the transformation that means one state to another state of the people. So, they were you know traditionalists, they were uh, in an underdeveloped state, but through communication they could be transformed, they could be taken to another level where poverty will be something of the past, there will be dynamism among people, there will be economic growth that is what she says and she also talks about greater social equality and larger fulfillment of human potential. Now, every human being has got certain kind of potential which we must nurture to, to have its full growth and she talks about it. It is quite a, a potent, it is quite a strong uh, definition. So, let me repeat once more, development communication is the art and science of human communication applied to the speedy transformation of a country and the mass of its people from the poverty to a dynamic state of economic growth that makes possible greater social equality and the larger fulfillment of human potential. Uh, with this, uh, this was something that uh, I am sure all the development communication students as well as scholars uh, are familiar with and they must have analyzed each word uh, of this definition. The second uh, a very um, strong definition we get is from Everett Rogers in 1983. Uh, he says that development communication refers to the uses to which communication is put in in order to further development. Such applications are intended to either further development in a general way such as increasing the level of mass media exposure among a nation's citizen in order to create a favorable climate for development or to support development programs or project. The key word that uh, Everett Rogers uh, uh, talks about or the phrase is to create a favorable climate. That means, the mentally people are to be prepared to accept the developmental messages. So, that means, a lot of discussion about development, about the various issues that would require attention of the policy makers and uh, if we do that one then mentally, psychologically people will be ready to accept something that the, uh, uh, the new things that would be coming to the society. So, Everett Rogers uh, also uh, uh, put in uh, his, uh, his contribution in defining what development communication is and the aspect that he highlighted was that development communication should be there to create a favorable climate, climate, psychological climate uh, to create also the physical climate so that people would be accepting the development messages. The third definition which is uh, quite famous, popular uh, and talks a lot about uh, development communication is of uh, Rosario Braid. Uh, she says that uh, development communication is an element of the management process in the overall planning and implementation of development programs. So, she talks about the uh, managerial aspect. So, she talks that uh, uh, talks about the process that is involved in development communication. That means, development communication will have to be planned, then it has to be implemented and it has to be evaluated. These are the three cornerstone of management, planning, implementation and uh, evaluation and Rosario Braid talks about that. So, development communication is a managerial process that means creating the climate as Everett Roger has said and also art and science that um, Nora Kebrel has, uh, has, has mentioned. Now, so from this, what from these three definitions and earlier uh, uh, work of Lerner and uh, Wilbur Sham and also the contribution of United Nations, what we find is that development communication is purposive. Uh, 
that means development communication when we package uh, the, the messages and we put it in the form of communication to the audiences, it should have a purpose, it, sh it must have objectives to achieve. Second point that we can uh, deduce from all this discussion is that development communication is positive. That means, if you listen to the messages, if you implement the messages and if you create your uh, mental frame in such a way that you are going to accept something new that is coming to the society, uh, you are going to get positive results. That is why it is called positive. And the third one, development communication is pragmatic, it is practical, it does not talk in the air. There is already a very laid out format, step by step one has to proceed and achieve whatever the development communication messages would be giving to the audience. So, overall development communication though as I have said that it was a weapon of the USA uh, to, to spread the message of development and thereby influence um, uh, the audiences to be in the fold of America or uh, thinking in like uh, 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 the, the American way of life. So, that is how they started. We get the seminal book of Daniel Leonard, Passing of the Traditional Society, his work that, that he did in Balgad village. And then we have found that uh, Wilbur Sham also stepped in uh, with his uh, book that was published in 1964. And then United Nations stepping in, um, uh, giving some norms. Uh, for every 10 people, there should be 10 newspapers, 2 uh, cinema seats and um, uh, 2 uh, radio sets. And after that, we have discussed the definition of Nora Kebrel, that is his basic philosophy, foundational approach in it. Then we talked about Rogers uh, definition and at the end, we talked about the Rosario Braid's definition. So, uh, altogether, this is the background of development communication. We can uh, go further into it and uh, we can uh, get some more material and enrich ourselves. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for this overview uh, that you have listened to and I am sure you will be digging further into the aspects of development communication, the philosophy of development communication and also how it has progressed around the world. Thank you for being with us.